Hey everyone, this is Miro. Welcome back to another Super Mario 3D World modding video. Now today, we are checking out the 3D World Floors Lava mod that I made for a couple of my friends. A little while ago, we did a playthrough of Bowser's Fury, but the floor is lava, and that inspired me to create it for Super Mario 3D World. As you can see, we start off in the cutscene, and the skybox has been replaced with the uh, dark lava skybox. And as you can see, the grass has been turned into lava. Now obviously it's not actually functional lava because of the cutscene. None of us had any collision at all. <laughs> I sent this mod to three people without telling them what it was, and I waited until they've all played at least some of it before making this video. So if you want to see some unsuspecting victims of this, check out Nintyler, Rebox, and Red Falcon. Anyways, everyone heads down into the clear pipe. Instead of going through the normal pinkish happy world, we're going into the lava portal of doom. And here we are in world one. Now this is one thing that I wanted to do that the Badger's Fury Floor's Lava didn't do, is that I wanted to make the entire environment feel like a lava level rather than just replacing the grass with the lava. So as you can see, I've replaced the water in the background with lava, we got a new uh, fiery skybox, and I've got the music from Super Mario 3D Land that plays in lava levels. Now this mod at the moment, it covers all of World 1, and there will be a download after this video goes up. I was waiting until uh, the, the people I uh, sent it to early had played it before I put a download. And you can get all of these green stars and stamps without dying. And for the sake of this video, I'm going to be trying to do that. This first level is one of the most forgiving ones because there's so many different types of services in 1-1 because, you know, it's the first level, they want you to be able to explore more arcade. By collecting all the green stars without dying, I, I don't mean, like, actually doing it in one go because that is way too hard. I mean, like, for that green star, that first green star, I went to the green star area and I left. I didn't just, like, dive bomb into the lava after. But yeah, because there's so many surfaces, there's the soil, there's the bricks, the grass, the wood. Uh, I can get away with just turning the grass into lava and it still makes an interesting interesting challenge uh, with some with some fun parkour but in other levels it's not quite as generous and where the entire level might be made of stone for example so everything ends up turning into lava in some levels now for the checkpoint you just need to sacrifice yourself for the checkpoint flag it's a bit of a scary jump but you'll always respawn back to safety and there will always be a one-up yeah i made this mod and I, i'm still dying this is actually really difficult and you know what i'm gonna go ahead and get the second green star i put this platform here you can wait for the rabbit to go onto the platform and then you can stop it with the hand now I did actually move the rabbit pile to a little bit so you can get the rabbit to go anywhere you want while you're still in the water pool. Normally he goes out a little bit wider and it's a lot harder. Okay, so to get out of this section all you need to do is just grab the fence like that and you can escape along there. But of course we want to go in the pipe. So, I mean, let, let us, let's take the fence and then we'll parkour back to the pipe. Now unlike in Mario Maker you don't need to be on solid ground to go through a warp pipe. So as long as you get the angle correct you can just... You can just swoop on in to the warp pipe. And here we are. The music that's playing right now is the Volcano Underground theme from New Super Mario Bros. Wii. And as you can see, as I said, there's not as many different materials here. It's just stone, so everything had to turn into lava. But the best way is just to spin jump and go for that. Oh god, you gotta be careful because the walls are lava and it's not just a texture. They really do kill you, so you gotta be careful there. But go back here, the invisible walls, you don't have to worry about that. And it spawns you back up here because otherwise it would plunge you right back into the lava. Although I haven't made like everything not kill you, like clear pipes where you can visibly see that the yellow run takes you to lava, it's still gonna kill you. Same with down here, that a warp box we need to get, and it's, a, it's very finicky to get into it because the camera just doesn't really want to cooperate. I'm gonna climb down this wall, and uh, okay, I didn't, I didn't succeed. One thing that Reebok did in this video, he was trying to like dive bomb down, and it works, but oh, the green star is right above that warp box, so it's really difficult. And you can see I've changed the clear pipe here. Originally, I didn't move the green star, so you'd have to like rolling long jump off of the fence and then like use that to cling onto the wall and then like get down the warp box. It was really difficult, but I decided to change it because I felt mean. The thing is about the Flawless Lava mod for Bowser's Fury that I think is important to maintain for the 3D World one is that it was all about how resourceful you can be, using your surroundings to come up with creative solutions, and I thought that was really, really, really fun. Okay, I died. You get the idea though. You see how you see how you can go in that wall box. <laughs> anyway, let's go into the clear pipe now. We can just kind of drop off because it does like to suck you in. There we go. In we go. And again, move to the fence now, so you just need to maneuver your way across the fence and all is well in the world. This is probably the easiest level, or at least one of the easiest levels we're going to be playing. There we go, top of the flagpole, let's go. Now a rule of thumb I have is that you have to be able to get the green salt and stamps using the resources in the level. So as we go into 1-2, 
Uh, we're gonna lose the Katsu and get the Fire Flower. So that that means that there will be no need to backtrack to 1-1 every time you die. No, if you die and you're stuck with the Fire Flower or Super Mario, you will still be able to pro progress through the level and get all of the collectibles. So that didn't mean every level is possible to get all the all the collectibles without power-ups, but it is possible using the power-ups it provides you in the level. So I've moved the upside down pipe to put you on this fence now, and we're gonna do a big old jump over to the clear pipe. We don't wanna go in it because it's gonna spit us into the molten goop. I actually find it easier not to get the Fire Flower personally, and then you can come down here and you can spin jump across. This isn't actually the way I uh, planned for it to be possible, but this is how people ended up doing it. And it is much uh, more obvious than the original plan I had, where I thought you had to have rolling long jump off the top, uh, which also makes it. That's a good thing about getting other people, other people to play your hack, is that, uh, you know, especially something like this, where it's all about being resourceful, you can see how other people feel with it. So here I've extended the clear pipe, and that green style's free, just as it always is. Head into the clear pipe here, and it spits us right into the blocks, and I've uh, gotten rid of the fire on the torches, so we can more easily jump to them, using them as extra platforms, and we can use the wall there to line up with the checkpoint. For the next part, we just want to get up onto the purple bricks, and we want to make our way into the warp box. Again, everything's stone here, so everything's going to be lava. I've moved the green star stand to the start point so we can stand there. This part is honestly pretty free. So for this part, the intended way is to build up a rolling long jump like that. Plenty of space, but you can also do it with a wall jump. That's what Red Falcon was doing on the stream. And this part is also quite heavily modified as well. Great. Now the thing is, because everything is lava, sometimes it's easier to just go the way of the hidden collectibles. Like the stamp here, it's much easier to just go in and collect the stamp than it is to actually make the jump across. <laughs> now we gotta be careful, we gotta be quick here because the Goombas can fall into the lava and it's pretty scary. And I tilted that pipe diagonally because I just found it more consistent to get into it when it was at a diagonal angle. Because sometimes you want a rolling long jump off and it's just, it's just a bit jank. Anyway, we're going to try and get onto the fence at the back here. And all is well. Now getting to the top of the flagpole, um, unfortunately means you do have to platform all the way over to this tree. So if you are going for like, true 100%, you're going to want to get the top of the flagpole by climbing that tree there, which is scary. If you haven't played this before, it's scary. <laughs> Next of all, we have the toad house. And again, since the floor is lava, the resourcefulness, it can come in handy here. Yeah, I got, I got all the items, but I lost my bell there. What if I wanted to take the bell to the next level? Well, you can just fall in the lava, and the lava resets. You can try again. Oh, I only got a mushroom that time. Mm, no, I want to try that again. Now, you might notice there aren't actually any one-ups in this toad house. Well, normally I've been putting one-ups at the start of every level, and that's because the toad house and the roulette room is your only gateway to get a game over. No one is going to try this, but I wanted to do it just to say that I've done it. Because when I say I wanted to theme everything around a lava level, I mean everything. The game over screen is lava. <gasps> anyway, we're gonna move on to the blockade. This one's pretty free. Again, everything here is made of stone, so everything has to become lava. And I made a little platform that you can stand on to get the star. Because you need to be standing on the platform for a little bit before the cutscene plays. In fact, some levels are especially mean, and my justification for it is, well, the player can just use Peach, so please don't be afraid to use Peach, or if you want to watch someone play it, tell them that they can use Peach. All right, let's go to Mount Beanpole. One thing I thought this was lacking was visual variety, so I decided to make Mount Beanpole a blue lava level, just like Fort Fire Bros. But everything, it plays identical. The blue lava doesn't act any different. I just wanted, again, some more visual variety here. And this one, in my opinion, is one of the hardest, but generally people find this one easier. But the first green star is still on this tree over there. You can get to it with a good old long jump. And it's not too bad just parkouring across the fence here, although the camera can be a little bit janky sometimes, but that's just the 3D world camera for you. Here, you want to just roll a long jump up onto that. You can go on the other side as well. Either, either one works, but I like doing it from this side because you can hit this with the finger and jump out to get it and dive back. And this makes uh, platforming a lot easier. It's not required, but it does help. Now, you may notice I was able to sit on the edge there, and that's because the edge here, it doesn't actually have collision, but, like, keeping it as grass would look really weird, so I just decided to give it the lava texture. There's a stamp, pretty standard stuff, and we want to go over to the blue coin room now. Now, the soil here is lava, so you want to do a quick cat swipe 
to get over that. And now we're going to this part. The floor would be lava, but I, had, I put a platform so you could do literally anything here. Because again, everything's stone, which means everything has to become lava. But because it's lava, it means you can't climb the wall, so you're gonna have to creep up to it and do a ground pound jump or a spin jump. But moving up, we only have one green star left to get. I put a little platform here so you can swipe on the cat here. And that lets you go up to the... Please? <laughs> that lets you go up to the cloud area. So the cloud area is unchanged, the floor isn't lava here, but there's lava around it. So normally when you fall off in the cloud area, you don't die, but here if you fall off, you obviously will die. And you can see I've given out some background scenery as well, just to add to the effect. Now I couldn't figure out how to get rid of this little fade out thing, so I just kind of kept it and I moved it so uh, you don't fall down here anymore. Now finishing things off with this, we have this piranha plant, and the reason why he's on the platform is uh, even though there's normally grass under here, for some reason they give the grass under here the soil collision, and the soil collision is obviously this stuff. So it's just like, it looks like lava, because this, it's the same texture as this stuff, but it's not actually lava. So I just masked it with a platform, and we can make our way through, across the barrier once again. I swear to god. But it doesn't matter how many times I've played Tetris this day, it's still always scary at the end, creeping around to the flagpole. What can you do? Apart from win. Okay, so what's going on with that blank space? Well, let's see. We got a Bowser statue. Now, this isn't normal. We don't normally have a Bowser statue in World 1. Uh, the Bowser statues, of course, lock you out unless you have the required amount of green stars, which we do. Now, what's even more weird is when we go down to 1-5, it's now called 1-4. It's still clearly Switch Scramble Circus, but it's 1-4. Now, you won't see this in the playthroughs of the people I sent this to. This is something I'm working on for the next update, but the levels remain the same. So let's bust this open and see what we get. It's a shoe! The Blistering Skating Challenge 1-B. We're gonna go into here. Now, there's a reason why we have this and not the Plessy level. And as we play through the Blistering Skating Challenge, I'm gonna talk about why we don't have the Plessy level replaced. So unlike in Bowser's Fury, in Super Mario 3D World, Plessy is immune to lava. That already kind of defeats the whole point, right? So, you know, I've been thinking about like what I could do to compensate for that. The first thing I tried doing is I tried removing the walls so it would just be like, kind of like the melty monster, kind of rolling rolling ball kind of section. I also thought another thing I could do is I could make it just not require Plessy and I could put like a really fast dash panel. So if I do that, then that would mean I can't have dash panels in any other level because they, you know, they shoot you really fast. So I decided the best way to do it would be to have a similar mechanic where you ride something, but instead of it being Plessy, we're gonna ride through an even more lava filled 1-1 on an ice skate. Now it's really, really difficult to get across this. As you can see, <laughs> because of course the ice gate isn't designed for those kind of level designs, so you have to really be on your toes. The music that's playing in this level is Fleet Glide Galaxy from Super Mario Galaxy 2. So the first green star is down here. And we're going to get, you have to do a little turn around, but thankfully you only have to get the green star at one time because it's the Switch version. Okay, so we're going to go across the clear pipe on the top because we want to get this. Okay, well, no worries. There is another shoe here. We, we can live. The rabbit doesn't stand a chance, bud. Sorry, nice try. And the third green star is just over this hill. We want to jump past all the box. Oh god. We want to jump past all the boxes. Get this third green star. Drop down here and go in the warp box, and that's the level. And uh, as you can see, Plessy is here. You know, since there's no Plessy level, I didn't want to just kill off Plessy. Plessy's just there, being immune to lava. <laughs> That crashes. I, I don't think I should use I don't think I should use the custom shoe. I don't think the shoe works. Okay, in that case, we'll move on from this one. You still have to get the stamp. We can get a switch scramble circuit, which in my opinion is the hardest one. This is now one dash four. I'm gonna straighten that lava. Now in this one, everything is lava because of just again the way the textures are used. So that's the carpet texture, of course, and then there's the cloth texture. Now the cloth texture is used for both walls and floors. <laughs> So, obviously, I could just replace the carpet, but that would be way too easy, because then there would be entire sections that aren't lava. What I'm talking about is the bit by the warp box that I'm making my way up to. That bit is the same texture that's used on the walls, so if I'm gonna change that to lava, I also have to change the walls to lava. Obviously problematic. <laughs> now, this is just so janky to move across. Obviously, I've gotten used to it because I've played tested this level so many times, but it is really, really janky. And unfortunately, I don't really know how, to, how the music works in the circus levels. So I haven't been to replace either, so you still have the really annoying 
circus music playing constantly, and I missed the jump. Okay. What's annoying here is all the individual balls here have their own collision, which isn't normal. Uh, Nintendo KCL didn't tend to have, like, ac accurate collision on the fences. That's what my exploration mod does. It gives stuff accurate collision. But in this level, it does have accurate collision, and that makes it really annoying. Ah. Uh, please. <laughs> Okay, if we go here, I made this jump pad launch you a bit higher, because obviously you can't wall jump anymore. I'm going to come down into the warp box, and <laughs> I was going to make you go across the fence, but I just felt like that was so mean. So as long as you get the checkpoint, you're going to respawn on the other side, because that fence is so finicky to walk across. This section is pretty normal. It's a nice breather, actually being able, being able to run on something that's not a fence. I wanted to turn these gold fences into lava, but that would mean I'd also have to turn the railings into lava, because they, same, the, they, they share the same type of collision. It's really easy to go across here, because it's in a straight line, and then we can just jump across. Okay. <laughs> I'm a bit late to explaining this, but I probably should explain, like, the most important thing to know for this. But I feel like people didn't know when I sent this to them. So obviously you're going to be rolling a lot to make jumps, but that can be really slippery. But one thing you can do to stop it is if you do a roll and then let go of the control stick and jump, you'll stick to wherever you are. Let's do a spin jump. Be safe here. There's a red ring. Can't get it. Very sad. And I've moved the mystery box because otherwise it would just spawn you into death area land. So instead, we're going to try and make our way over to the fans. Uh, all right, let's try and just spin jump into the mystery box. Okay, so for this part, I have uh, I added an extra crate down here, which allows you to fall down. You can see it there briefly. <laughs> oh, I just realized I haven't mentioned this yet. If you were wondering how long it took me to make this, it took me about three days to make World 1. It was pretty much three days of doing nothing but this, though. Like, I worked so hard. <laughs> Let's try and get these with the hand. Don't be afraid to use the hand to your advantage. That's the third green star. We can now finish things off. The stamp is right at the end. So we're just gonna do a little spin jump over there and go into the clear pipe. Let's get these coins because people get annoyed at me when I don't get them. And from here, just ground pound, do a spin. Looks a bit janky, but it's fine. It works. Get the stamp and we can get that flagpole. There we go. Finally got through. I'd say the first half is harder than the second part, to be honest. Just a couple more levels left to cover. So let's keep going. Next up, we have Captain Toad. Now, the Captain Toad one is an interesting one. I've got a few things that I want to talk about for this one. So, normally, uh, the way it works is uh, that they use different collision types for every different part of the level. But because the Captain Toad level is so simple, they use the same collision for the entire stage. So, you're not going to be wall jumping off these, so you don't need to know that it's not the grass, you know? The problem with this <laughs> is, of course, it means we can't, we can't exactly turn the grass to lava. That would be unfair. You literally wouldn't be able to do anything. So I used uh, my exploration mod, which uh, makes the collision more accurate by importing the course models over the collision. And by doing that, I was able to split up the wall and floor into separate collision types. And therefore, I could turn the walls into lava. Now, doing this is making this part specifically very difficult. Because apparently, Toad has a very large head and it bonks on the top of the ceiling. So I made the entire level about 1.1 times bigger. So now you can fit under as long as you position yourself correctly. Since it's got the accurate collision mod, you do need to try and position yourself to be like in the middle like that. Otherwise, yeah, yeah. Otherwise you bonk on the ceiling. And of course, because it's scaled up, that's why the skybox looks really dumb. You might have seen in my videos where I've made 3D World bigger. You can see that there's just, there's just no skybox in those levels. In case you were wondering what this music was from, this is the music that they use in the World Crown Captain Toad level. A tool that's really helpful for making sure you don't bonk on stuff is by pressing in the right stick to reset the camera. Okay, there we are. Now I've used the camera effectively. Just try and leave this. Oh, no, come on. Ugh. So difficult, dude. So difficult. So the last level we're going to be going to is One Dash Castle. You no longer need green stars to enter it. So let's head in and see what it's like. It's very lava filled. <laughs> and the music that I'm using here is called uh, The Crimson Tower from Paper Mario Color Splash. It's not a lava level or anything, but I felt like the music fits. Now, first of all, we have the green coin ring. And I've moved all the green coins so they're not on the lava anymore, meaning you can actually collect them. This level is honestly much easier than a lot of the other ones. Because honestly, believe it or not, I do actually want to make this mod kind of forgiving. It's just difficult because some levels don't want you to make them forgiving. Now, one thing that's really annoying is this green texture. Sometimes it's stone, sometimes it's metal. The stone is lava, the metal isn't lava. Here, the game thinks it's metal, but on the side, it thinks it's stone. I can't replace the texture. 
because if I, if I replace the texture, then all of the green is going to look like lava. But only some of the green is actually actually has the collision type of lava. And if I make all the metal lava as well, then all the railings will become lava. This game really annoys me sometimes. Now anyway, we're going to go across this signpost, you know, jump up onto the side, onto the exact same texture, and grab the stamp. And I've added another little launcher because I felt like it fit since I, you know, removed the normal area here. And next, we're going to be getting onto the thwomps and riding on up to the top. Theoretically. In my opinion, the easiest way to get to the thwomps is to go in the corner here and just do a ground pound jump. Now, if thwomps go up much higher than normal, make it easier for you to get up onto the side here and grab the second green star. Now, the third green star is on a Goomba stack, which it didn't really live. I decided to leave it in just in case someone found a way to get it, although I have no idea how you would. I don't think it's possible, to be honest. Now, you can get another green star that counts as green star 3, uh, which is just on top of that launcher over there. We just have to make the round a little bit more, and it's pretty easy to get to. These platforms are honestly really stressful, but you can just get across with a rolling long jump and not have to worry about them. And now we're going on to the boss. I think in the next update, I should add a checkpoint here, but the boss isn't too frustrating. Now, interestingly, you might have seen in a recent ZX Money video, you can actually stand on Bowser's car. So naturally, I had to make that lava as well. Now, I don't know how you actually get to it. In fact, I'm pretty sure you can't actually stand on it unless you, like, utilize some sort of, like, character hack. We know if someone plays my mod with Moon Jump for some reason, then they'll die to Bowser's car. And the music that's playing here is Fury Bowser's theme, uh, specifically the hard version of where it doesn't go away post-game. But yeah, that's all of World 1. We do need to make our way through here as the carpet is lava. That is all of World 1. I have really, really enjoyed making this. It was so much fun. And I really hope you enjoy watching it. If you want to give it a try, I will be uh, leaving a download for this mod on Game Banana, like I do with most of my other mods. And I will probably make a World 2. I, I, again, I don't like promising full game stuff because that stuff takes so much dedication and I'm so busy working on the channel. But I would like to do a World 2. And I have started World 2. I've done around three levels of World 2 so far. Anyway, I'll see you soon. Bye, guys.